uh, yeah, description of, of love here. You know, we live in a world where love is so distorted and uh, misused, the, the word itself is misused, that uh, we, we really need to know what it is. We, we need to know what God has said about it. Sometimes we think emotions are, are what we're looking at, but I can guarantee you, you can have plenty of emotions without having any love. <laughs> Uh, you, can, uh, you can really be deceived with that. We, we've looked at the first three verses. Let me read them to start with. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor and Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So in those verses, he, he shows us the prominence, the importance of love. You know, without love, he, he says in, the, in verse 1 that really all we produce is noise. We can have all these fancy words, but without love, it's just noise. In verse 2, he says, without love, we have no value. Yeah, I found that startling to, to look at that. I am nothing. Without love, I am nothing. Wow. That's a strong statement. And in verse 3, he says, Without love, we receive nothing of value, or it profiteth me, me nothing. At the end of the chapter, he tells us the most important thing is love. The greatest of these is, is charity. And that word charity, don't, don't be mis, uh, misled by that. Uh, that's just the same word as John 3.16. God so loved the world. Uh, the world has changed the meaning of, of the word, not, not the Bible. In uh, verses 4 through 8, he, he begins to give us more about the qualities of love, the properties of love. So let's read, starting in verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. <coughs> Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. We'll just stop reading there this morning. It's God's description, the properties of love. The Bible, of course, has much to say, and not just in this chapter. There's a verse in 1 Peter where he says this about love. It's 1 Peter 4.8. Above all things... So that, that's the importance he's, he's given it here. Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. And then he adds this, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. I don't know about you. Well, no, I do. <laughs> we all do wrong at, from time to time. In a church, in a family, the more you do, the more likely you are to offend. The person most likely to offend you in this church is me. <laughs> All right? And I'm really hoping you'll love me enough to cover the multitude of my sins. And you should be hoping that I'll do the same. And we should do that because of the love of God. See, he says there, above all things, more important than anything else, charity among yourselves. It's not just in your head. That's what I was saying about emotions. You can really feel like you are really a loving person because you have emotions. And it can make no difference to what you actually do other than maybe weeping at home a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, real love does things. Uh, in, in 1 John 4, uh, he talks about how God is love. And, and it, it's interesting to see the things he, he puts with it. 1 John 4, 8, he says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. And then in the same chapter, he says, verse 16, We've known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Love is just a, a part of God. It comes from God. He's the one who, who gave it to us. And as we read here in, in 1 Corinthians, really this is a portrait of Jesus. What we're doing is we're, we're reading a portrait of Jesus. You could insert Christ there for, for the word charity. Christ suffereth long and is kind. He's the, the perfect example of all of these. And he's not really dis defining love, he's describing it. Now, love is an action. It, it's verbs. If you remember in, in school, you know the difference between adjectives and verbs. Uh, verbs are action. 
Uh, love, love is suffering long. Love is being kind and so on. And what we want to do as we look at 1 Corinthians is to put ourselves in it and see you know, what God is doing in our lives, what's, ha what's happening in, in our lives. We need to make a, a personal application. Uh, I want to do that. I, I'm hoping you'll do that. And the, the first part of his description here in verse 4, charity suffereth long. Now, this is probably not going to be your favorite part of love, all right? I remember when uh, Stephen and, and them moved, moved to Australia, uh, one of his daughter's expressions was if she really didn't like something, she'd say, Grandpa, that's not my favorite. And what she meant was, I, don't, I really don't like that. <laughs> that's not my favorite. Uh, this may not be your favorite part of love, but let me tell you something. You will really appreciate it when the person suffering long is doing it to love you. You know, there's things that we, we don't always like to do, but we really like them to be done for us. Uh, but it has to go both ways, doesn't it? Charity suffereth long. What it means is being patient with people. If you want to be even more specific, it's being wronged, having the ability re to retaliate, and not doing it. <laughs> See, when, when people wrong you and you have no ability to do anything about it, but that's not really long-suffering. That's just suffering. But love doesn't retaliate. When you have the ability to retaliate, and, and you don't, you, you stop and you, and you think, no, I'm going to do what Jesus would do. I'm going to love here. That, that's what we're talking about. Now, love does speak the truth. We read there in, in verse 6, it re rejoiceth not in, in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. But love doesn't simmer until it explodes. That's what verse 5 is about. Uh, it doesn't behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked, and so on. Uh, you know, we're, we're not talking here about uh, just being a doormat. Uh, we're not talking here about just holding your anger in. But we're talking about literally being patient with people, uh, loving them. Now, now, the contrast is the world really values vengeance. There are lots of movies about people who seek revenge, you know? I'm not going to name them. Um, this is nothing new. Let me give you a quote from Aristotle. He lived a long time ago. <laughs> he said, the great Greek virtue is the refusal to tolerate any insult or injury and the readiness to strike back at any hurt. Well, there's wisdom for you. Uh, he said, we, we're not going to practice Jesus' definition of love. We, we really value people who seek vengeance in the world, but God says that's, that's not the way we want to be. I think it even goes back to Cain and Abel. You know, Cain was not happy with what Abel was doing, and he got his vengeance. Now, there's some good examples of long-suffering. <clears throat> I, I think you'd, you'd have to start with Jesus. You know, on the cross, Father, forgive them. Now, if anybody could have retaliated, it was Jesus. You know, like, like we sing in the song, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. I mean, he could have retaliated, but that was why he was there, was to love us. He was there to die on the cross. Wow. Now, he could have retaliated, but he didn't. There, there's an example in the book of Acts, a, a man named Stephen, one of the first deacons, he, uh, he preached, and boy, they didn't like his sermon. Now, I've never had people respond like this, uh, but they... <laughs> They took rocks and threw them at him until he died. And the Bible says, he, as he was dying, he kneeled down and, and said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. It means he, he died. That's long-suffering. He could have said, Lord, revenge me, or you know, whatever. Uh, but he said, Lord, help them to understand forgiveness. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and, and verse 9, you see the, the long-suffering of God. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. A lot of people think, well, God doesn't do anything about our sin. No, it's not slack. He's being long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we see this all around us. You see it particularly with the nation of Israel. You ever thought about that? You read the Old Testament? God's chosen people. Man, they, 
they ignore him, they disobey him, they slap him in the face, you know, so to speak, and yet God is patient with them. You see it in the New Testament. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. God is, is very long-suffering. You know, the world thinks, oh, you know, God, if God existed, he'd, he'd get us. There, there was a famous atheist, uh, I think in the 1800s, named Robert Ingersoll. Uh, one of, when he would speak to people, one of his gimmicks was he would hold up a watch and say, if there's a God, I dare him to strike me dead in the next five minutes. And he'd stand there and, you know, yammer on while, while they were waiting the five minutes. One preacher said, did the gentleman think he could exhaust the, the patience of the eternal God in five minutes? <laughs> Listen, God is long-suffering. Five minutes, hey, he's got five minutes for you. He's got eternity for you if you'll turn to him. Patience mixed with love has great effect. You see many examples. One that was mentioned that, that I heard was, you may have heard of the American president named Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. There was a man, a politician at the same time, who really hated him. His name was Stanton. He called Lincoln a low clown. He called him the original gorilla. He said, why should folks go to Africa to see a gorilla there when there's one right here? Very bitter towards, towards Lincoln, very hateful. Lincoln never replied. When Lincoln was elected president and was choosing his ministers, you know, they call it the cabinet there, one of the men he chose was Stanton. People said, why? He said, he's the best man for the job. You see, he rose above those, those words, and he was long-suffering. When Lincoln died, Stanton made this statement. There lies the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. He couldn't resist his patience, his kindness. He didn't like Lincoln. He didn't like his politics. But love suffers long and is, and is kind. And, and you know, the, the amazing thing is that God is patient with us. God is patient with us. In Romans, he, he says, Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? God puts up with us, he puts up with our sin because he wants the opportunity for us to respond to his love. He wants us to repent and to know him. That's why he made us, that we would have fellowship with him. Love is long-suffering. Love is being kind. Now, in a sense, this is the other side of the coin to long-suffering. You know, long-suffering says, I'll, I'll take anything. Kindness says, I'll give anything. In a sense... The other side of the coin. And you see this in God. Romans 5, 8. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We kind of gloss over that bit, while we were yet sinners. That means we were at enmity with God. <laughs> while we were his enemy, God sent his son to die for us. Kindness. See, God is good. That's just a quality of God. God is kind. Uh, James put it this way, he said, Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Aren't you glad God doesn't change? You, you know, the, the false gods that they've made up, oh, they're, they're very changeable. Uh, that's why they're always worried about whether they're going to be on their good side or not. God is good. God is good, and there's no change in that. He's good every day. He's good all the time. He's good to everyone. Even in his judgment, God is good. Jesus said in Matthew 11, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, what a blessing. And you know, the, the application we need to make is, are we kind? Are we kind to our family? Uh, kind to our husband, to our wife? Uh, parents, are we kind to our children? Children, children, are you kind to your parents? You know, some children have never even thought about that. Am I, am I being kind to my parents? Uh, at work, at school? Uh, is it a quality that is coming out in my life because I'm living the love of the Lord? I, I heard, I think it's a true story, uh, two, two men met on a narrow mountain pass. It's only 30 centimeters wide. And one was going up, one was going down. They couldn't get past. One man laid on the, on the path and the other guy walked over him. You say, well, nobody's walking over me. Well, let me tell you, love doesn't mind getting walked on to help others. You see it in homes all the time. 
people who sacrifice themselves because they love their, their children, they love their husband, they love their wife. You see it all around. And let me say this. If we can learn not to retaliate and to return kindness, our Christianity will mean something. And when people see us and how we respond, if they'll see us not retaliate and instead return kindness, that'll make a difference. Because, you see, that's what God told us to do. It's real easy to love people when they love you. It's real easy to love people when they're kind to you. But Jesus said in, in, in Matthew, uh, let, let me actually read his words so I, so I get them exactly right here. In Matthew 5, 44, I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Well, that's a tall order, isn't it? But that's love. Love is, is above everything else. Love suffereth long and is kind. And he says the reason we do that is to be the children of our Father which is in heaven. Be perfect. Be complete as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Love. Love suffers long and is kind. Then the, the third point he makes there in, in 1 Corinthians 13 is love doesn't envy. Love envieth not. Now envy, I think, oftentimes is confused with jealousy. But envy is actually different than jealousy and in some ways much worse. Um, jealousy is basically saying, I want what you have. You got a nice car, I want a nice car. Envy says, you have a nice car, I wish you didn't have it. Envy is just mean. God calls it in, in uh, Proverbs 14.30, rottenness of the bones. The verse says, a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy, the rottenness of the bones. It's a terrible thing, envy. Um, it's, it's hard to rejoice when someone does exactly what you do, only better. <laughs> or with more success. Maybe you think they're not better, but they are just, just happen to have success. Um, there's lots of illustrations of, of envy. There were a couple of Italian musicians in the last century, maybe the one before, Toscanini and Muscani. Probably never heard of them. Uh, they hated each other. They were top, you know, top in their field. They were asked to conduct a music festival together. When one heard that the other was coming, he said, well, you've got to pay me more than you're paying him. So they paid him one lira. The other guy was doing it for free. <laughs> envy just makes fools of us. Envy is rottenness of the bones. It's a destroyer. Now, we laugh about that illustration, but we see it regularly in the news where someone kills his family or she kills her family and they say, well, if I can't have what I want, nobody will have what they want. Uh, men who kill women and say, if, if I can't have her, nobody can have her. Listen, it's rottenness of the bones. Don't let it be a part of your life. A, a good illustration of people who could have had envy but didn't is David and Jonathan. Remember their story in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel? Um, the first king of Israel was Saul, Jonathan's father. Normally, Jonathan would have been the second king of Israel. But God rejected Saul and called David to be the second king of Israel. You know, Jonathan had every human reason to really dislike David and really envy him and say, I wish he wasn't there. But the Bible says of Jonathan, and let me read it here, it's 1 Samuel 18 and verse 3. Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. They were mates. They were friends. Uh, they had a, a good relationship, and it maintained right, th right through their lives, in opposition to Jonathan's father's attitude uh, toward David. And he could have shown envy, but he chose not to. You see, envy, the, the Bible in a way describes it as hatred without a cure. Proverbs 27, 4 Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? In James chapter 3, he, he says that envy contributes to every evil work. That there's nothing good comes from envy. Uh, James 3, he says, let's see, I'm starting in verse 14. He says, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, 
Glory not and lie not against the truth. Don't make this some glory in your life. Don't think, yeah, I'm going to get revenge. That, that'll be good. No, that'll be bad. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. It's not part of a good thing, envy. It's part of bad things. It has no place in the Christian life. God describes how we should live. Verse 17 of James 3, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. But you know, envy is so hypocritical. Really. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Envy, jealousy, bitterness, it has no place in the Christian's life. And, and you know, as, as I'm speaking this morning, if God is bringing things to your mind uh, of, uh, of this kind of thing, uh, it needs to be dealt with. You need to deal with it. Ephesians 4, he says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's the negative. Then he says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What a blessing that God shows us both the wrong way and the right way. And he says he'll help us and he'll go, go with us. Uh, the properties of love. If you're a Christian this morning, uh, long-suffering and kindness need to be a part of your life. You need to ask God to, to help you with that and not envy. And you know, Jesus has gone through this and uh, 1 Peter says that he, he did it to be our example. And uh, like Jesus is what we, we want to be. God's will for your life is to, for you to be like Jesus. Maybe this morning you're not saved. Maybe you've, if you died, you're not sure if you'd go to heaven or hell or, or what would happen. Well, let me say, this, these verses speak to you because Christ patiently puts up with you in your rejection. You know, he, he doesn't smack you around. Uh, he loves you. And in kindness, he offers you forgiveness and eternal life at his cost. God sent his son. Christ died for, for our sins. In 1 Peter, he says, who his own self, that's Jesus, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. That's God's love for us. God shows us. He's the example of exactly what he's talking about here this, this morning. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says God is love. When it says God so loved the world in, in John 3.16, you can put your name in there. God so loved Bill Bramlett that he gave his only begotten son that if Bill Bramlett will believe in him, Bill Bramlett will have everlasting life. What a blessing for you. Unto all and upon all them that believe. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. God offers salvation by grace. As a, that means as a gift. He paid for it. And what a blessing that we can know God's love. And that then God through us, you know, as, as we have the Lord in, in our heart and in our life, he says he's there permanently. He begins to make us like Jesus. Sometimes we fight him every inch. <laughs> but you don't have to. God can help you to love those people that have harmed you. To love those people who you find difficult to love. You know, some people are easier to love than others. It's just the way it is. Some people just don't hit it off. But with God's help, you can, you can love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth not. We'll, we'll look at some more as we go through these in, in the weeks to come. But you know, the, the key is, where are you in God's description of love? Have you trusted Him? God is love. You need the Lord to be able to handle the situations of life uh, that confront you. Let's go to Him in, in prayer this morning. With our, our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about, about love, about loving that one that God has said that you, you need to love. Maybe you've been resenting those that haven't loved you that should have. And yet, the only one res you're responsible for is yourself, your response. Lord, help us this morning as we consider these things. Lord, help us not to be bitter. Help us not to envy. 
Lord, help us to be long-suffering and kind. Help us to be like you. Father, I pray if there are those this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them to see that. Help them to respond to your love and to trust you as Lord and Savior. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a song that's not in your, your songbook.